Gaming is the newest 4-star character added to Genshin Impact, and he is easily the best 4-star DPS in the game, no question. Well, at least if you have C6. I've been testing him a ton, both at C0 and C6, with all the teams I could think of, and I'm ready to tell you whether or not he's worth it to build for you, compare him to the other Pyro DPS in the game, and let you know how to get the most out of your Gaming if you decide to build. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Ga Ming is an on-field Claymore Pyro DPS, a role that we definitely weren't lacking before, but his unique and extremely fun playstyle makes him a welcome addition to the roster nonetheless. His normal attacks are very normal indeed, with his kit not getting a Pyro infusion, so C6 Bennett is often a great partner for him. His skill and burst are what combine to make the bread and butter of his kit. Let me explain the flow of his combat to give you an idea of how this kit comes together. You'll open with his burst, which recovers some HP, summons his little lion which attacks the enemy, you'll then immediately use his skill, which is a special plunging attack that first dashes towards the enemy and then does the plunge. This plunge has crazy scaling and vaping or melting is key to maximizing Gaming's damage. He will lose some HP after the plunging attack, which makes him very synergistic with the artifact set Maria Sachet Hunter, as well well as Farina. The lion from his burst then returns to you after a second or three. The exact amount seems to be RNG to me, but potentially your positioning versus the enemy is a factor. Let me know if you have the details and I'll add them in a pinned comment. When the lion returns, it will reset the cooldown of your skill, which you'll want to use again as soon as possible. The lion keeps running out and returning, and you'll always want to use your skill off cooldown when you can, so keep an eye on that timer. What you do in between skills depends on your teammates and your setup. Sometimes you're going to be normal attacking, sometimes plunges, sometimes nothing. His passives give him some extra healing and some skill damage, which are both good. Overall, he has a really cohesive and fun kit, except for the fact that his normals can't be infused with power without C6 Bennett. So on some teams, you sort of just have nothing to do while your skill is off cooldown, and it feels a little weird. Despite this, he's an extremely fun and very strong DPS, especially when you get constellations. So let's talk about those now. I'll tell you right now, his big constellations are C4 and C6, and I'll answer the big question right away. Is he worth building if you don't have C4 or C6? My opinion is very simple. If you've watched this video, if you've tried him in the trial run, and you like that playstyle and you want to build him, as long as you plan to get C6, eventually he is worth building at whatever constellation you get him at. Yes, if you don't have his proper teammates and you don't have his high constellations, he will feel lackluster 100%, but the fact that he's so good at C6 and you can eventually, but through wishing on banners, through choosing him as your lantern right selector every year, you can eventually guarantee his C6 and hopefully you can get it sooner than later as you wish on different banners throughout the game. Personally, I found his C0 performance was just fine. It didn't feel great. It didn't feel good. Don't expect him to really pop off until you do get his C4 and especially his C6. The energy is really big to be able to not worry about his energy. The talent levels are actually very useful and his burst just gives an absolutely crazy amount of stats. 80 crit value is insane. His other constellation C1 healing some extra HP when Whenever the lion comes back, which is actually really good for quality of life, as it's pretty easy to die with Gaming if you don't have this constellation. C2 for overflow healing gives him some extra attack. Not that useful, but not bad. Talent levels for his skill, that's a big one. Where I talked about C4, C5 is burst levels, really not a big deal. And then C6 is obviously the big one with that 80 crit value. I think for leeway characters in particular, I have a much smaller problem with the, them having really crazy constellations than a lot of other characters because you can actually guarantee them eventually. It'd be nice if they like all four stars, they put them on the shop. But hopefully if you really love Gaming, you're going to be wishing on the Cloud Retainer banner anyways. And hopefully you get at least a bunch of constellations of him. You can nab a few more constellations on his next banner. You can choose him as your lantern right. And then you'll have C6 before you know it. I would say it's totally fine to build him before C6. He will function, but don't expect him to carry your account until he does get there. Also, the idle and the animations are absolutely incredible. They look so freaking good and they look amazing in game when you're attacking as well. Very, very impressed with that. 
So first teams, obviously he's running with Shen Yun. This is going to be his ceiling team. I will say though, it's not my favorite team of his. I do think it is the strongest, but if you're not careful, you can easily miss out on vapes. Double swirling with this team is extremely hard. And if you do, you lose out on Bennett uptime. And the combos are absolutely madness to try and do. It is really, really fun. I will say the gameplay is high octane. It is incredible. I generally just end up giving up on the double swirl. The way that you could do a double swirl is Farina skill and burst, Shen Yun skill and burst, Bennett burst, skill and burst into normal attack, into Shen Yun normal attack, into gaming, and then you're gaming. The key is to dash cancel all of your plunges, both your skill and your normal attack. You don't want to normal attack cancel them because then you'll apply too much pyro if you're using Bennett C6. If you're not using Bennett C6, like you, it's not as bad to normal attack because you're not going to be applying pyro. Um, for it to be his best team, you will want to make sure you get that double swirl. And the reason why I recommend Shen Yun's skill and burst before Bennett is to maximize the uptime. Her skill and burst animation take a little bit of time and you don't want to eat into Bennett's uptime um, at all. So just using the normal attack of Shen Yun to swirl is what you may want to make sure you do. I actually didn't master it. The footage you're seeing is me basically ignoring the double swirl, but I definitely will be mastering it eventually um, as I build him and test him more. Like I said, definitely his best team. Very fun, very high octane, very challenging, like mechanically intensive, but the reward is there. It is crazy. It is one of the, he is one of the best DPSs in the game when you get this team to sing properly. I don't think he's up there with Novalet, but he's pretty darn close to Hu Tao and maybe just, just below the very top, like Novalet and um, Alhaitham, just below them. My actual favorite team to use with one is, is this one. This one is just so much easier to play. You're going to be using Farina's skill and burst, Yolan's burst and skill, Bennett's skill and burst, and then you're gaming. Your burst skill, and then you're going to be normal attacking instead of plunging. And that will be applying Yolan's coordinated attacks and applying lots of hydro. You're going to be vaping everything. You have plenty of hydro. And this team is just so much more brain dead to run. Um, the only consideration is maybe you're not getting full Farina stuff because with this rotation, you're not healing Freena and Yolan. But I think with gaming's HP changes, I do believe you still will get most Freena stacks, if not all. So I, I, I haven't tested it myself, but it's it's been cracked. Like this is because this one's so much easier to play than this one. Um, that's why I like it better. Um, just so you know, you can absolutely replace Farina with Singcho here. The problem is, is if you do have C6 Bennett, there's a chance that you don't get the swirls. I, I still got them. I still got the vapes. It wasn't an issue, but it, it can it could happen theoretically. I think Sing Cho has enough hydro to keep the hydro aura. With this team for sure, you can get rid of Yulan for Sing Cho. You can get rid of Farina for Sing Cho, and the team will still sing. Farina is a massive buff to the team, of course. If you're gonna main gaming, I do highly recommend picking up Farina at least, if not Shen Yun as well. I mean, Shen Yun's on this banner, great synergy. You might as well get her. Um, you can also swap Bennett for Shen Yun. Um, this one it's still good. Like, don't get me wrong. It's just kind of scuff because. Well, your plunges aren't infused with pyro, so never mind. This doesn't work. It doesn't work at all <laughs> because your plunges aren't. So there's, there's no point in plunging normally because your normal attacks aren't infused with pyro. So there's just actually no point to this at all. Definitely stick to either this one or this one and the variations of it. You can swap around your hydro characters, but kind of the, the core needs to remain. I, of course, tried him with Chevrous and Bennett and Fischl, and I don't like it at all. I think it's really cope and not that good. It was not able to do even half the clear speed of the actual good teams that I showed you. Um, and the reason why is pretty clear. He has infrequent, very big nuke style hits and you want to be getting reactions off. So whether it's vaporize, whether it's melt, you want to be maximizing those big numbers. And by using him on a Chevrous team, which shreds the defense equally, it's not recommended. I think Chevrous is really only good with characters that don't don't want to vape or melt. So characters like Raiden, like Yaimiko, like if he's really good with those, but Hu Tao, Yoimiya, D Luke, Klee, these are characters that want, well, not, sorry, Klee, who's not, it's not, not Klee, but D Luke, Yoimiya, and Hu Tao, these are characters that want to melt their hits. And so, or not melt, but they want to vape their hits. So taking that away is a big loss of damage. Whereas characters like Linny, you know, who doesn't vape anyways, he works great with Chevrous. So yeah, Gaming Chevrous, highly don't recommend. Um, Mono Pyro Gaming is a little bit better, but I still hated it. He's mostly just getting carried by the other ones. His It's not his raw damage that's that impressive. Like it is good. Like even at, at, like at C6, it is really good. But what makes it 
great is the fact that he can vape or melt. And speaking of melt, I've talked a lot about melt, but I haven't showed a lot about melt. And that's because I don't like melt at all. You maybe there's a version of a melt team that doesn't require you to swirl because this is the one that I saw three crafted uh, before Gomming's release where I you use Rosaria's skill, Kazwa's burst, then it's skill and burst, Kazwa's skill, Rosaria's burst. By the time you get to Bennett, like you're losing a ton of uptime on Bennett. So by, by the time you get to Gami, you're losing a ton of uptime on Bennett's burst and you just don't get that many melts off. They're really strong when you get them. 180k, big damage. But the issue is it feels like a meme. It feels like big screenshot damage, not a real DPS team. Um, I tried different variations. I tried using Rosaria's burst before Bennett, but the issue is then you're running out of Rosaria bur burst too early and you're not melting your hits. So I think we just need to wait for a better cryo applicator before we try and do melt gumming. But again, maybe there is a way to make it work. Maybe there's a different team. Maybe use Rosaria Ganyu, but then you still run into the same issue where you're either using them both on Bennett to snapshot their buffs, and then you're losing a ton of Bennett uptime. So I don't see that working at all. And then maybe use them before Bennett, but then you're losing uptime and you're losing a lot of damage. So I don't really see that working either. I'm really not sure what one is to do with melt gumming. I see the vision. I see the potential, but in practice, it just doesn't feel very good to me. So if you have to go budget, if you have to go free to play, I guess this isn't budget or free to play because it has Yalan here. Maybe you sort of do a national thing. If you don't have Yalan, maybe this, maybe it's like gaming national. You get a double swirl of sucrose. Yeah, that may, 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 maybe this worked. I just thought of it now though. I didn't get to try it, unfortunately. But overall, like two really good team cores that have really high damage potential, one that's more sweaty and one that's easy and brain dead to play and both of which are very, very strong. Awesome. That's what that's that's everything you could want. Now for the build guide. He is essentially, I mean, I don't know if he's a hyper carry because Farina and Yalan or just Farina are doing a good amount of damage for sure. But you still like, I don't know. I would level 90 him eventually if he's going to be your main, you know, it's not as important as a lot of characters like animal characters that do their damage through swirl, dendro characters that do their damage through spread or electro characters that do their damage with hyper bloom or like the hydro characters on Nilu teams. Those should all be prioritized for level 90. But Gaming being essentially a hyper carry it is very important that you max out his stats. So eventually I think taking him to 90 is a good idea. For talents, depends on the team. Some teams, um, you won't be using your normal attack at all. Like for melt, I forgot to say for melt, you actually don't normal attack. You're just melting with his skill. Um, so that's pretty funny. Normal attacking is a big DPS loss. I wonder if there's a melt with Shen Yun. But yeah, most of the time you will want to level his normal attack since you are going to be doing a lot of damage with plunges. Um, definitely leveling his skill is a massive, massive deal. And I would level his burst as well because you get healing from it. Actually, the only actual uh, multiplier that increases when you level it up is the main smash damage, which I believe is his initial hit. So it's definitely not a huge priority, but it's still a good multiplier. So I definitely would level it, just not as important as the other two. For his weapons, big shout out to the Genshin scientist, by the way. Go check him in the description. Check his content out. He's amazing. Uh, but this is the list that Genshin scientist recommends. Serpent Spine being the best, then Verdict, then Beacon, then Red Horn, Rain Slasher, Mailed Flower, Wolf's Gravestone. All of the gaming you've seen has been with Wolf's Gravestone. So there's actually a lot of potential for him to perform even better than what my testing showed. The reason I didn't use the other ones is because, well, I don't have Redhorn. My Rain Slasher and Mailed Flower are not leveled up. And my Verdict, which I would have loved to use, but I just don't have the right artifacts. My artifacts have so much crit rate. And between the Mario Sachet Hunter artifact set, I was just, I'm already overcapping on crit rate without even looking at this. So it's pretty nice that the Rain Slasher is such a high such a high damage if I, I definitely will either work on my artifacts or work on my rain slasher uh, once I build gumming on my account so but just just choose whatever weapon you have you can see that they're all pretty darn close like rain slasher being just barely behind the other weapons is is awesome and if you happen to have serpent spine and you're not over on crit then great oh he is including crimson witch for verdict and bacon and serpent spine that makes sense because Mario Suche is just gonna be completely impossible interesting I actually tunnel vision on Mario Suche hunter I didn't even think of putting crimson witch because I know that Mario Sashay gives so much more stats. But thanks, Genjin Scientist, for teaching us all. Make sure to go subscribe to him. For artifacts, yeah. If you're using a crit raid weapon, as we just learned, you'll want to make sure you use the Crimson Witch of Flames artifact set. For most people, I think it's going to be better just to use your Mario Sashay Hunter because it's so resin efficient to farm. You're going to be farming it for Farina. Anyways, the domain. So almost definitely going to end up with good pieces on this set too. And Rain Slasher is so good that you can, you know, and it's not like anyone else is using it. So you might as well do Rain Slasher Mario 
say. For Sands, you want to go Elemental Mastery. You want to go Elemental Mastery unless you're playing in the Mono Pyro team or the Chevrolet team that I didn't recommend. Then you want to go Attack, but otherwise you definitely want to go Elemental Mastery so you can maximize that reaction damage. If you're using Rain Slasher and you have a ton of substats, you could consider going Attack, but even then, generally, Elemental Mastery is going to be better. You can go Pyro Damage Bonus or Elemental Mastery or Attack on your Goblet if you're using your, him with Farina because Farina gives so much damage percent. It's going to be better overall to go Pyro, but you can use the others if you just really don't have a Pyro Goblet. And then almost always Crit Damage um, Circlet to complement either the, the, the set or the weapon. You're looking for EM, a little bit of ER. He doesn't need all that much when you're at C4. When you're at C0, he needs kind of a lot. Um, I had 117. I had never, never, never any problems with this. I'd recommend between 110 and 120 when you're at c6 but maybe maybe he really doesn't yet i do have favonius on my farina though so you're as always your mileage may vary it's really important you get his burst up because that's what enables his skill to be so powerful so you do really want to make sure you have enough energy um and if you don't just make sure you're doing your right rotation and then if you don't just get some more energy but i know you can't i don't like to give specific energy requirements because everyone's teams are different that you might use favonius more or less you might do your rotations wrong or right um it's better just to test it out out and see but start with between 110 and 120 when you're at c6 and i don't even know what it's c0 like pre c4 i don't even know what it would be like 140 plus and go from there versus others how does he stack up versus the other pyro dps's in the game i think he's a bit better at, at c0 he's definitely worse than c0 Deluc when you're using shenyun teams the advantage Deluc has is he can do double hydro shenyun like you can still run bennett for sure you can run the same team with Deluc, but you can run the double hydro core because he infuses himself with pyro from his burst so that's the advantage that Deluc has but yeah at c6 definitely does beat out Deluc. but both of them are so good so so good that there's no shame in using either i think that he's better than Klee. He's definitely a lot more fun than Klee. Um, Klee does have some crazy teams though. Like Klee is pretty, is a pretty underrated character. I do think he's a bit worse than Hu Tao, but I wasn't using the best weapon on him. My team wasn't optimized, but then again, my gameplay for Hu Tao wasn't optimized either. I'm not really sure. In the ballpark, for sure. Uh, definitely way better than Yoimiya. Probably in the ballpark of Linny as well. You know, whether these characters are better and worse, it really depends on the content, on the teammates, on your account, what characters you have free, what characters you have, what characters you want to play etc 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 so i don't want you to take this comparison too seriously but just know that he is definitely one of the top carries so if you want to build him he's definitely worth it but it's not like he's a character that you need to build it's like you see him you think he looks fun you think he looks awesome you build him and you're happy you did but you're not like missing anything by not building him like dilu is more than good enough and very very comparable so you know don't feel like just because he's like better than dilu and you have a dilu built that you have to build him like you don't. Diluc is plenty meta, and I will be making my Diluc guide. It'll be coming out like day after tomorrow, so subscribe for that. So yeah, so final ranking for value and power level, absolutely A tier, you know, on the higher end of A tier, something like that. And account value, if you need a DPS and you happen to have C6, or you plan on getting C6, then good value. <laughs> but if you already have a bunch of power DPSs, then obviously not good value. So there you go. For future prospects, I'm not sure. I think that I think that he has everything. Like, what more could a character like this get? But I, I, I felt that way about Hu Tao, and then we got Plunge Meta. So who knows what surprises are in store? But I feel like he has to be capped out for future prospects. Like, there's already so many Hydra support. He has multiple Animo support. Oh, I know Mel. He could really, really use a good cryo offfielder with like a really long-lasting skill. Maybe the Saritza will do that or something. And so that really, really good power application because he has slow enough power application that he can he could do it if we just had a really good bryo character like ganyu just i know ganyu like has some potential but it just i just i just don't i don't think it's it um i don't think it's what we need for for a gaming melt not consistent enough cryo and same with kai it's just not it's just not it that's the biggest thing i think i could see for future potential and for overworld i mean it's a bit annoying being tied to his burst for his best damage but you can still use his skill outside of his burst just build more a little more er being a claymore character means he's got pretty chunky attacks regardless if you're using with c6 bennett and with shen yun especially um being able to plunge just on demand just build lots of er on your bennett lots of er on him or even not lots of er on him but just being able to plunge on demand with shen with shen yun gonna be really good so i think you can build definitely use him as your overall character pretty easily and claymore being good for mining etc i think he's a pretty solid character for overworld like not one of the insane characters but definitely pretty solid let me know if you 
you think I missed anything? Um, I, I've been I've been testing both him and Shen Yun a lot. There's been a lot of teams to go through, and we've had very limited opportunities for testing. The biggest thing I missed and wasn't able to test is his AoE potential because the Abyss is just awful for AoE. Like this just Abyss is no good for testing AoE. So we'll just have to wait and see how he performs in the future. For AoE, I would have liked to mention this earlier in the video, but whatever, it's your fault if you didn't watch to the end. Um, let me know if you think I missed anything. I will add anything I learned from you guys in the pinned comments. This is just a day one guide after all, but I try and be as absolutely thorough as possible to give you the best content possible. So subscribe if you want to see more of that. Thanks. Bye. Bye.